Workers keep dying. Safety keeps chasing Band-Aids. A relentless safety snake bite. All right, so I'm just going to come out and say it. This subject straight pisses me off. When we go around talking about how awesome our companies are at safety because we've got low incident rates, it equates to pissing on the grave of every worker who has died at our facilities. There is no correlation, and the games we play to get good are just disgusting. Interpreting the gray areas in CFR 1904 to justify leaving it off your 300 log is not safety. If you think I'm wrong, just do some research about the excellent injury rates and safety programs of giant companies that have experienced multiple deaths when offshore rigs explode or massive chemical releases, explosions, etc. happen that poison whole towns. The point is, anyone can boast good numbers. Very few of them can say they've provided their workers a workplace that will not kill them. So stop looking in the wrong places. If you're willing to accept the idea that our main goal is to prevent death and catastrophic injury, this should be an easy, logical leap. Trying to reduce risk to the point where no one is injured is ridiculous. Life itself is a risk of injury and a guarantee of death. I've said that many times, but the safety zealots and olds just won't buy it. The only reason for an organization to set a goal of zero injuries is to look good on paper. That's becoming more competitive and beefing up bonuses. It's much less glamorous and a much harder endeavor to focus on the things that kill. So we don't. We nitpick every bump and scrape that required more than an OTC dose of Advil. Then we chastise managers and supervisors because they can't find any way to prevent those things from happening again. The sad part is that for all the time we waste trying to find the root cause for why Billy's finger started hurting, we lose valuable time that could be devoted to making sure his partner didn't get crushed by the faulty machine he operates. Here's a newsflash. You can't prevent every injury. Neither can those leaders who you accuse of not giving a shit about safety. If you want to eliminate risk in your facility, recommend shutting it down as the corrective action next time someone gets a cut and needs stitches. That's the only way to guarantee it never happens again. So it's time to get off the pedestal. Safety professionals, actually leaders in general, are prone to superiority complexes. We get so good at analyzing things after they happen that we start believing that that knowledge can translate into real time. If only our workers paid more attention. Maybe if we spent some more time working alongside them, feeling what they feel, seeing what they see, and reacting to what they experience, we'd have a better perspective. Until we realize that our view of the world is different and start trying to figure out how other people see it, workers will keep dying. We'll be safe in our plush office chairs, though. So I guess in the end, it doesn't matter. It's time to put some pragmatism back into this profession. And that's exactly why I wrote my book, A Practical Guide to the Safety Profession, The Relentless Pursuit. Go buy it, my Link in bio. Yeah. If you're, <laughs> if you're reading this thinking that I haven't offered a meaningful solution to our problems, well, go buy the book. I'm not going to give everything away for free. Either way, let's work together and start making a difference in the lives of the workers we're supposed to support. They might not thank you for it, but at least you'll be able to sleep at night knowing you did something that mattered. I'm glad I was on mute because I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> um, I'm a, a reformed safety nitpicking person that was always like doing the analysis of how do we not have to record this or how can I protect the company's EMR or recordable incident mm -hmm. rate or whatever. And I thought that's what safety was, was getting like, into the weeds on that kind of stuff. And I'm glad that I learned from people fairly early in my career yeah. after oh, learning from me those too. people, um, how, you know, we should really be approaching these things. And it is sad how quick it can happen that a new safety professional gets that old attitude, um, and that animosity attitude that the workers are like, dumb or that somehow they're doing these things on purpose or that they're always trying to screw over the company. And like that becomes your default thought whenever something happens. Like, I hate that. No, I'm also a, a reformed case manager rather than a, uh, a safety guy and our safety professional. And, you know, one of the things that caught my attention on that safety snake bite was the idea that when companies rush to solve a problem, most of the time they're solving the wrong problem. 
And yeah. so they're not solving the actual, you know, we, we talk about root cause analysis and all that other stuff, but when an incident occurs and we immediately throw out a new, um, uh, you know, a, a new policy, a new procedure, a new commentary on, on the way we're going to do things moving forward. Sometimes we're going to find that that's uh, the wrong problem to solve and we're not really going to solve the problem at hand. Yeah. What comes to my mind is I, I've spoke to this before, but looking at it through the lens of practicality or the lens of principle. And when you, when it comes to safety, you have to rely pretty strongly on the lens of principle. You should always start there. What I see happening with that, what you're referring to is just like the gross kind of like, you know, the disgusting, just trying to make the good optics that all that is, is, is the lens of practicality without the lens of principle. It's let's be practical about this. Let's because we have goals, we have KPIs that are set by the top. Um, and if those goals and KPIs are set poorly, i.e. set on the number of recordable incidents, now, to look good, to have good optics, to use that, you know, to practically speaking and, and get all of our bonuses and look good to our bosses, it now means that we have to keep that number low. And then that leads to a culture of hiding injuries. I, I just, I don't understand. And, and the argument, of course, is, well, if you don't shoot for zero, then you're okay with people getting injured. No, that's not the point. You know, I, there's just no... We're not gods. You know, we're not. You know, we don't have the ability. It, it is so it, stupid. It's so stupid to say if we don't say zero, then people think it's okay to hurt people. It's like uh, no. no, everybody knows an injury is bad. Like, do you think your employees are that stupid? What do you take us for? Well, it's false dilemma, right? It's not exactly. the, those two. It's a one thing does not equal. Exactly. Yeah, one yeah. thing does not equal another. So, right. what? How many of you have heard the phrase? Well, if safety would have been there, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> no i probably would have been the safety guy <laughs> right yeah. and, that, and that's always been my confusion is like you know a decision being made is a decision being made it doesn't ha matter whether or not the safety professional is on site or not you know a, a piece of faulty equipment is going to fail whether or not the safety person is on site or not yes we can observe some things and we may think of some things that the workers don't think about as we're out there but that doesn't prevent injury or incident Right, right, right. So it's just about being a champion of safety. It's sort of like when you post something for sale on like the Facebook marketplace. When you post it, every, everyone sees it. It's on top. It's the, it's the first thing everyone sees and you get the most attention when it's on top. But then over time, other people post things as well. And yours kind of sinks down, you know, your, your issue or your, your, the thing you're trying to sell sinks down to the bottom of the list. And then I think maybe you can do it like up to seven times um, every once in a while, you can bump your post back to the top. And that's what I, I think safety has a lot to do with that. It's a form of marketing. Yeah. You, you're trying to put a, a spotlight on these issues so that they don't get buried by other priorities. And you're supposed to just facilitate it. You're supposed to put a spotlight on it. That's what leadership is all about. You know, what, what's interesting about this topic and that article specifically, I just looked, I published that July 25th of 2019. Um, so that was before we all hooked up and got this thing rolling, but wow. before, before we, we had, had relations, <laughs> that's before. Crazy. right? <laughs> so you say you go gonna... back Thursday. Yeah. Perfect. Um, but I, I got so much shit for that, that from, from the olds. And that was before that term was even coined. And it was just like, wow, you, it, I don't understand. I don't understand a reality because I don't see the world this way. So admittedly, this is one sided, but I, I don't see the world any other way than what I just expressed in, in that. And I haven't changed that opinion well, how can in, a, we, in a year. How can we communicate this to others in our field without coming across? I think it comes across right. condescending or. Oh, it did. It, it absolutely yeah. did. I was so mad when I wrote that. So this is what and, I recommend. Yeah. You, you tell them, you, you tell them if they want to cry about it to call the wambulance. And that their tears are delicious. That's not condescending at all. No, no. <laughs> no, but I, I, that was that was a directional shift for me. Honestly, it was, and and I think um, I, I, what I'm going to do is I'll release that by itself, and then people can later on they'll be able to listen to this commentary. But 
that it was so uh, vitriolic and and uh, polarizing is right uh, the right word I think that you know I got a ton of response from it, but it wasn't the kind of response that I wanted because I didn't want to fight with people. I just I was passionate about the message, and the ones that didn't want to hear that just well who are you to say this and who and and from that moment and that was really a pivotal ch- changing a cha- that's a conversation. You know, tra- conversation it was it, that was a transformative moment in my writing because i realized that if i was funny and if i was engaging and entertaining and you know instead of spiteful and angry that um that my message would come across and then if you're laughing the whole time through you know three minutes of an article and then at the end i stick you with something like that you're like oh shit yeah uh, i don't agree with There's that the snake bite gotcha. yeah so so, so what you're saying is that funny Jason is more acceptable than angry Jason. Yeah, you track more flies with honey. Well, hey, not many man, people quote my motto. I love it. <laughs> yeah, not many people like angry Jason. <laughs> Hashtag soul doctor. Yeah, it does suck though to think that you have to modify your language approach, and I I understand that. And as a person that's been told to that I come across to like cold or mean or angry sometimes, then I have to add like a thanks with an exclamation point at the end of an email to make people Best feel regards. better. Um, <laughs> like I, I hear that, but I do think that like the language and how to get this message across and discuss why zero is bad. I think maybe that's something that we all, the four of us should definitely dig into. Well, you know yeah, what? That would- that was actually the the whole purpose of that uh, uh, social media safety minute that I recorded and posted this week. The idea of of safety it d- doesn't equal no incidents, just like love doesn't equal no hate. The whole idea of that is to to change the messaging just a little bit to a way that's that's acceptable and understanding, and hopefully people can get an idea that you know just the lack of something doesn't make it something else. Uh, you know, I love how every time I say something that is like risque, um, Abby's keeping me on track. She's like phrasing, phrasing, you <laughs> right. know. And and it made me think about um, how it's so it's so fascinating. It depends on your audience. So much depends on your audience. And we talk about the olds, which can be anybody with that mindset. It's a mindset, but it, it's so fascinating that when you're speaking to a group of executives. Versus when you're speaking to a group of older safety professionals or olds versus when you're speaking to a group of safety professionals that get it versus when you're speaking to the younger up and coming safety professionals versus the different employees. It's so important to know your audience and change your your phrasing and your tone right. and everything based on that audience. Like it's not simple. It's very challenging. No, I, it, it, it is. What was that? I said it's worth it though. Oh, it's worth it. It's it's worth it. (laughs) Because I think we're all like self-aware enough to understand when we might be triggering people and that we know how to step back or try some different words or different tone or approach or whatever people need. Um, And I think that's okay. I know for me years ago, maybe not that long ago, um, I used to get really upset about that. But now I realize it's it's definitely um, a mature thing to do in yeah. communication. Oh, and I think there's two parts really, because there's communication amongst ourselves as the safety profession, right? And then there's communication that we make or, or that we engage in with our, with the workers that we support. And I think we need to get past the debates in order to be effective because we can sit and, and stew and, you know, talk all day long about this stuff, but it really doesn't affect anybody other than our little safety circle. And that's not fair. You know, one of, one of the things that we need to learn from the, uh, the olds is, you know, part of the reason that we call them olds or part of the reason that they're considered olds is that because they are stuck in their ways. And that's one of the things that we can learn to be different is to not be so stuck in a singular mindset, but to actually take some time to step back and hear the argument, respond to the argument, and and then let it go. Like holding on to it is is one of our biggest problems. Yeah. And I also think part like my advice to safety professionals who are being, feeling frustrated because maybe they feel like they're surrounded by olds 
in a big company, which is, you know, my full-time gig is a giant, it's like 23,000 employees or something like that. There are people who have been at the company a long time that I know it's a waste of effort to even try to discuss anything because they're so set in their ways and they have such giant egos. There's just no point. However, there are people who have been at the company for a long time that do listen and are still willing to learn. And so those people are out there. You just kind of have to search for them and you can actually make pretty good headway uh, with those folks. Like don't give up. (laughs) So there you have it, folks, a very special relentless safety snake bite with Jason Maldonado and some added commentary with the rest of the safety justice league. We really appreciate you listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to like comment and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll see you again next time. The views expressed on this podcast are solely the opinions of the hosts and their guests. Not necessarily their employer, organization, committee, or any other group or individual on this planet or any yet to be discovered containing intelligent life. The podcast is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Nothing within this recording is intended to be used as legal guidance or representation of any entity. No portion of the podcast may be reproduced without the express written consent of the show's creator, Safety Justice League, LLC. But hey, ask us nicely, we'll probably share.